from Charlottesville to the assault on the Capitol. One of the darkest days in the history of our nation. We're seeing this country fall apart before our eyes. How the former president galvanized an army. You've got a guy who's a nationalist in the most powerful seat in the world. We can actually win. We can actually get our views represented. Stand back and stand by. So Trump encouraging calls to lock Whitmer up. Lock them all up. The far right militias have felt much more licensed to publicly engage. Terror plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen. To arrest her. It was going to be a citizen's arrest. Two militia groups were preparing to kidnap and possibly kill me. You don't fight like hell. You're not going to have a country anymore. Violent mobs stoked by the words of President Trump stormed the building. They were hostile. They were venomous that their country somehow was being taken away from them. In the aftermath of the 2020 election, how these groups have become part of the American political landscape. What was the role of the Boog Boys on that day? There were some Boogaloo Boys in the crowd associated with us. They weren't there for Trump. They were there just to mess with the federal government one more time. Over the last several years, Frontline and ProPublica have been reporting on the rise of hate About what you did in Charlottesville last year. And their violence. What do you think was going on in this house? They were making bombs. Now, correspondent A.C. Thompson investigates the surge of far-right political violence. What do soldiers and Marines bring to the Boogaloo? And they bring training expertise in certain areas. They have decided this is a strategic initiative for them. There is a real, legitimate fear. We've got to be vigilant about it. I'm afraid that more innocent civilians are be targeted and actually victimized by these violent offenders. Everything that we had predicted has come to fruition, and it's actually worse. Donald Trump's campaign is obsessed with the past not the future. He's willing to sacrifice our democracy, put himself in power. Now we have a president who's a great danger to democracy. He really is, he's a great, he is a danger to de democracy and uh, at a level like few people have seen. This is the case where they're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election and we can't let that happen. Weeks later, on January the 6th, just as lawmakers prepared to certify Joe Biden's victory, Trump held a rally in Washington, D.C., and again said the election was rigged. Less than two hours later, his supporters stormed Congress. Three years on, Donald Trump faces criminal charges that allege a wide-ranging conspiracy to overturn the results of the election. This was my plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all. The former president and his backers aim to strengthen the power of the White House and limit the independence of federal Here's agencies. One. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, and I will wield that power very aggressively. Then I have an Article 2 where I have the right to do whatever I want as president, but I don't even talk about that. I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and the entire Biden crime family. They started out peaceful and orderly, but Nigeria's elections have descended into disorder. Can you see what is happening now? They want to make sure they suppress others from voting. Protests against election officials. <laughs> and in some cases, violence. But if Saturday's vote looked like chaos, tonight's contested results show support for continuity handing a sweeping victory to Bola Tanubu, the ruling party candidate, over Atiku Abubakar, running for the main opposition. The results infuriated Nigeria's main opposition parties, who walked out of the vote counting center, calling the polls a sham and demanding a rerun. They say long waits at polling stations. So we are still waiting on them. Along with days of delays counting the vote are a sure sign the ruling party is cooking the election books. Much of the anger here is aimed at Nigeria's election commission. 
Voters are furious. The results from Saturday's polls were still being counted on Tuesday. We want our results, our real results. We have suffered a lot. Nigeria's elections are a turning point for a troubled nation. It's the fiercest presidential contest since military rule ended here in 1999. But Nigeria is fending off a bloody Islamist insurgency in the north, rising crimes like kidnappings and a currency crisis that's caused a shortage of cash. Many young Nigerians have now put their hopes in Peter Obu, who pulled off an upset win in Lagos, the leading party's home territory. It's an existential election. The country is going through okay, okay. a very difficult time. It requires an urgent and immediate Obi's dark horse candidacy was social media savvy, rejected traditional tribal politics, and challenged establishment titans for the first time. They called um, the wreck in Imo, where even the director of ICT was saying they should use offline to upload. So if results were not uploaded, if results were not uploaded, we as parties cannot be challenged that the process is over. The process is not over because it is faulty, results were not uploaded, and if those results were not uploaded, we are definitely going to contest the authenticity of whatever presentation is being made here. And tell us that what is uploaded, is, you, you don't want to show us, you don't want him to tell us. One of the two must happen. We are Nigerians, we will defend our rights. This election, we will serve with our blood, we will make sure that writing is done. If there is difficulty in uploading it, there's no difficulty in the return of sir telling us that what is uploaded is what is presented. And if that is a lie, we will meet in, we'll meet in the court of law. Socrates' prediction of the fall of democracy. Democracy must fall because it will try to tailor to all and everyone. The poor will want the wealth of the rich, and democracy will give it to them. Young people will want to be respected as elderly, and democracy will give it to them. Women will want to be like men, and democracy will give it to them. Foreigners will want the rights of the natives, and democracy will give it to them. Thieves and fraudsters will want important government offices, and democracy will give it to them. And at that time, when thieves and fraudsters finally and democratically take authority, because criminals and evildoers want power, there will be worse dictatorship than in the time of any monarchy or oligarchy. Moreover, in its pursuit to please everyone, democracy will sacrifice its principles. The pursuit of equality will lead to an erosion of justice, as it will not discriminate between the deserving and the undeserving. It will abandon meritocracy for mediocrity, all in the name of inclusivity. Freedom will turn into anarchy, as individuals will believe that they can do anything without consequence. The very essence of law and order will be challenged as personal freedoms will be placed above communal responsibilities. Education, instead of being a tool for enlightenment and wisdom, will become a means to spread populist ideas that cater to the lowest common denominator. True knowledge and critical thinking will be cast aside in favor of rhetoric that pleases the masses. In its effort to empower the marginalized, democracy will inadvertently empower those who seek to undermine it from within. Ideologues with sinister agendas will exploit democratic freedoms to infiltrate and corrupt the system, promising change while sowing discord. Eventually, the weight of these contradictions will cause the collapse of democratic institutions. The rule of the mob will replace the rule of law, and chaos will reign. Desperate for order and stability, the people will welcome a tyrant who will promise to restore peace and security, but at the cost of their freedoms. Thus, democracy will end not with a revolution, but with a whimper, as the values it sought to uphold will be its undoing. In the end, the cycle of history will turn, and a new form of governance will arise from the ashes of democracy, 
promising a return to order, but with despotism looming over it. If you enjoyed this video and found it insightful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends and followers. Your support fuels our efforts to produce more educational content, just like this one for you. Thank you.